from London. In this video, we're going back to the basics and I'm gonna tell you the 101 things you should know before you come to London so you have a nice, fun, and smooth trip while you're here. So, let's go. This is what London looks like. The city is huge. As a tourist, you will probably be sticking right in central London in the middle of the city. Just like most major cities, we have a big river running through London called the River Thames. And it's got lots of important bridges going over it like London Bridge and Tower Bridge. And people usually mix those two up. This one is London Bridge and this one is Tower Bridge. So if you want the pretty one with the museum on top of it and the one that opens up for the boats, Tower Bridge is the one you want, not London Bridge. London is a fairly flat city in the center, but it can get a little bit hilly once you start to go a bit more to the outskirts. And even when we use public transportation here, we still end up doing a lot of walking. So you might wanna make sure you pack decent shoes to get yourself around the city. London has a lot of airports, six to be exact. When you search for flights to and from London, you will see pop up Heathrow, Gatwick, Luton, Stansted, City, and Southend, which I don't know why we're calling London Southend an airport. It is so far away from London that, honestly, skip that one. Never fly in or out of Southend Airport. London City Airport is the only airport that's actually in London. That's the one that's right behind me. The rest of them are either on the outskirts or completely, completely outside of the city. However, they all have pretty decent transport links, especially Heathrow Airport, which is the biggest international airport. You've got three different trains that you can take to get into central London. There's buses, you can taxi it. So all of the airports are doable options, except for South End. Avoid South End. Why are we even calling it London? I don't know. I don't know. It's cooler when they're landing. London is generally divided up into five different areas. There's central London, right in the middle of the city and where most of the main tourist attractions are. There's west London, which is generally considered quite posh and has places like Harrods and Notting Hill. Then there's east London, which is quite eclectic and cool. If you've seen pictures of street art, they're generally in east London, right in Shoreditch. Then there's North London, which has a little bit more local vibes. There is the buzzy King's Cross and Camden areas, as well as the beautiful Hampstead Heath. And there's South London, which is quite local with some really cool areas like Peckham and Brixton, plus lots of tourists end up in Greenwich. And if you want our best local recommendations for each of the parts of London that I just mentioned, then check out our line of casual tourist guides in the Love in London shop. We've recently made a video about this, which you can watch by clicking the card popping up in the corner. And in it, we tell you about some areas that are very central that you can stay close to the attractions while also giving you a couple options for a little bit more of a local vibe. So if you choose to stay in an area like Westminster, Covent Garden, Soho, you can expect to be First of all, paying probably the highest prices for hotels anywhere in the city because they are super central, but you'll also be really close to most of the major attractions within walking distance or a few tube stops away. Alternatively, if you go a little bit further away from the tourist attractions to an area like Notting Hill or Shoreditch, you'll get a bit more of a local vibe and a tiny bit of cost saving, not too much. If you really want cheap hotels, you're gonna have to go quite far out of the center of London, keeping in mind you'll then be spending more on public transportation and just more time taking public transportation to get into the center of the city. And alternatively, you could always book a hostel instead, which is the most cost-effective way to stay in London. We also really recommend not booking Airbnb or similar services when in London because of its negative effect on the housing market here. So it is negatively affecting people like me and everyone that I know, but also, they're not really good deals anymore. They're not that much cheaper than staying in a hotel anyway. So we have an article on our website that talks through all the reasons why we say that we think you should avoid it. You can click that link in the description box to read the full article. By the way, if it's your first time visiting London, we have a free London trip checklist that will tell you everything you need to do, buy and book before you get to London. So you can download that completely for free by clicking the link in the description box of the video. Okay, now let's get back to all the tips. 
The main way to get around London is via the tube, aka the underground, which is our underground train system. And this is what a tube station looks like. There are lots of them around the city. We also have the iconic red London buses. Those are public buses. And depending on where you're going, you might find that it's more convenient to take one of those instead of the tube. This is what the tube sign looks like. You'll see it outside a tube station. This is the sign for a mainline train station, which means it has trains that go from London to other parts of the country. And this is what a bus stop sign looks like. If it seems like it's really complicated to figure out how to get from point A to point B with public transportation in London, well, it's the 21st century. We got apps to help with that. My favorite is the City Mapper app. It tells you exactly all of the route options that you have to get from wherever you are to wherever you need to be. It also tells you how much your route is gonna cost, if there's any delays, and a whole bunch of other helpful information. Google Maps is also another great app that you can use for public transportation as well. I kind of interchange between them sometimes, so both work fantastic. If you wanna see step-by-step step how you would go about taking public transportation to get somewhere in London, then have a watch of this video next where we show you step-by-step step how to figure out your journey and also how to actually navigate the tube system. That's a must watch before you come to London. If you wanna take a taxi in London, you basically have two different options for how you can do this. The classic black cab, which is iconic and is one of the symbols of London. There's some right behind us. You can call one of those by either going to the taxi rank at the airport or at one of the major train stations, or you can use an app called Get, and that is the main app you can use for getting a black taxi. The other option for getting a taxi in London is to use one of the popular ride hailing apps like Uber or Freenow to call a licensed taxi, but it's not a black cab. However, you also can call a black cab usually in those apps as well. You can also get a black taxi just from the street. If you see one going by you that has the light on the top turned on, which means that it's free. It's free to hail, not doesn't, it doesn't cost nothing. You still gotta pay for it, sorry. When it comes to paying for a taxi, if you take a black cab that you have not hailed through an app, you can pay by cash or a card. They usually prefer cash. Or if you've called a car by an app, then obviously you're gonna just pay directly through the app. No extra money is needed. Do keep in mind that taking a black taxi tends to be quite a bit more expensive than calling a car through Uber. Okay, let's do some quick fire tips. We use Great British Pounds here as the currency or pound sterling, not euros. So don't try to use euros when you're paying for anything in the UK. Also, London is basically a cashless city these days. You would be totally fine going around and not having any cash on you. I barely ever do. Even when you're trying to tip at a restaurant, you can put everything on your card. That being said, if you do wanna have some cash on you, there are plenty of cash points all around the city where you can easily withdraw and have a little bit on you. And if you're watching this video, you probably already know this, but London is one of the most expensive cities in the world, so make sure you're prepared for that. This is what UK plugs look like. So if your devices won't fit into that, you will need to make sure you bring an adapter for your dual voltage devices. London gets a bad rap for weather, and that's kind of fair. We get rainfall about 29% of the year, which is about 109 days a year. However, London is much drier than the rest of the UK, and it's comparable to cities like Seattle and Paris. So I don't think it's that bad but depends on which day you ask me. I feel good about the weather today because it's so nice out. The main thing to know about weather in London is that it is very variable and unpredictable even throughout a single day. So you do need to pack and plan knowing that. Temperature wise, you can expect highs of around 30 degrees Celsius or 80 Fahrenheit in the summer and lows of around freezing in the winter. The weather is like absolutely perfect today. Can't complain. The drinking age in the UK is 18 or 16 if you're with a guardian and having a meal. Cars drive on the left-hand side of the road here, and we have two different types of pedestrian crossing. One with lights, which tell you if it's green that you can go, or if it's red that you can't. There are also pedestrian crossings called zebra crossings, or zebra crossings to the North Americans where pedestrians have the right of way, so cars are meant to stop on each side to let you cross over. However, sometimes they don't stop, so just be careful. 
London generally is a very safe city and anywhere that a tourist is gonna go, I would say is completely fine and you will have no problems. However, we are in a major metropolitan city, so you should of course be careful with yourself and with your things. So for example, Personally for me, if I'm on my own late at night, I usually don't take public transport by myself and walk by myself, I'll take a taxi. And also you have to be very careful with your belongings. Don't flail your phone around when you're walking out and about. Keep your stuff close to you and your pockets zipped up. But otherwise, you're gonna be totally fine here. I say all this as I have my phone sticking out of my unzipped pocket. Don't do that. London is a very dietary requirement friendly city. So if you're vegetarian, vegan, or gluten-free, you will not have any problem eating well here. In fact, if you're vegetarian or gluten-free, almost every single restaurant you will walk into will have at least a couple of options for you. And if you're vegan, we have tons of plant-based restaurants that serve really, really good food. So. Honestly, you're never gonna eat badly here. However, that being said, you should always check a restaurant's menu or contact the restaurant in advance if you are worried about them having something available that meets your specific requirement. Also, if you have one of our London itineraries or casual tourist guides, you will see little indicators by each food recommendation telling you if a place is vegetarian, vegan, or gluten-free friendly. So if you have either of those requirements, highly recommend getting one of our guides. It makes it really easy to eat well here. Tipping in restaurants here is actually less complicated than in some other parts of the world. Most restaurants in London will add an optional service charge of 12.5% onto your bill, which is optional. So if you've had really bad service, you can ask them to remove it before you pay. If service charge hasn't been added to your bill yet, then you can just tack on 10 to like 12.5%, 13% if you are happy with the service, and you can pay this either by cash or you can ask your server to add it onto the amount that you're going to pay on your card. Okay, here are a bunch of words that tourists often mispronounce, and now you don't have to be one of those tourists. Let's start with the place that we're in, Leicester Square, not Leicester Square, Leicester Square. Let me use it in a sentence. Leicester Square should be avoided at all costs. Leicester Square is where good taste goes to die. You got it. If you go to South London, you might end up going to Greenwich, not Greenwich. And where a lot of the touristy stuff is Westminster, not Westminster, don't add the extra I. If you go to the Royal HQ, it's Buckingham Palace, not Buckingham Palace. They're close, but there's a difference. This is a quite specific one, Gravener Square. Looks like Grosnever. It is Gravener. And if you head around the South Bank, you will be near the Southwark area. It's not Southwark, it's Southwark. There's also lots of other words that we can go through, but those are the basics to know. And if you have any other tips for pronunciation, leave them in the comments of the video. Hope you found this all helpful, and if you want more tips for your trip to London, make sure you grab our free London 101 guide, which has everything you need to know before you get to the city. That is linked in the description box of our video. Plus, we have like 400 other videos you can watch that will help you with your trip to London, so click one of the boxes popping up around me to watch one of those next.